What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about when Canada tried to acquire an entire tropical island. That's right, uh, I never knew about this, but according to this video that we're gonna watch today, Canada wanted to have, like, its own version of Hawaii. So there's a whole story behind all this, and I'm very interested to learn a bit more about this and what Canada has been up to trying to get an entire tropical paradise <laughs> all to itself added to Canada. That sounds very interesting. So let's take a look. Once upon a time, Canada almost gained its own piece of paradise. Really? Now, obviously getting a little jealous from its neighbor to the south, Canada oh. was looking beyond the 49th <laughs> parallel to expand its domain. Really? More specifically, to the islands of Turks and Caicos. Where? Turks and what? Turks and <laughs> Caicos. Huh? Yeah, most people have no clue this place even exists. What is this? Turks and Caicos. He's absolutely right. I have never heard of this in my entire life. Canadians out there, have you ever heard of this island? It's by... The Dominican Republic? Um, did you know about this? I've, I've never heard of this story of Canada trying to get an island that sounds very far away from Canada, actually. It's like more south than the United States. This is very interesting. The islands are located right here nested between the Bahamas and the island of Hispaniola, with a total area of only 417 square kilometers. Really? Just to put that into perspective, that is 13.6 times the size of Prince Edward's Island. What? Oh, wait, that's actually pretty substantial then. Maybe Prince Edward Island is kind of smaller than I realized, but how was Canada just gonna get this island? <laughs> I know that like, Really, really rich people can buy private islands. Is, th is it kind of like that? Like, was Canada going to go to the Turks and Caicos and be like, name your price, <laughs> whatever you want. Like, how expensive was this going to be? How is this going to work? <laughs> this, is a, this is really interesting. And why didn't this happen? This would have been really interesting if this had happened. There would have been technically a part of Canada, officially, like, more south underneath the United States. That'd be very interesting. Which is Canada's smallest province. With a permanent population of only 37,000, ah. the territory is composed of eight inhabited islands and many uninhabited islands scattered all over. So, this... Is this like a nation? Like, is this like a sovereign country? Turks and Caicos Islands. Like, do they have their own government? Like, how would this work? There's thousands of people living there already. Would they just have, like, gone along with this and been like, okay, we're Canadians now. Woohoo! Like, how would this logistically have worked? <laughs> Who came up with this idea? It really is your average Caribbean island with beautiful white sand beaches okay. and tropical temperatures all year round. Okay. It kind of really is the opposite of Canada. That's a good point. This actually might be, this might make more sense than, <laughs> aside from this being a whole cockamamie scheme, which sounds kind of crazy, there might be some logic to this, like, then Canada would have like this beautiful tropical island that Canadians could like, what? Either choose to go live in or vacation to? It'd just be a part of Canada. It's kind of like the United States and Hawaii. Hawaii is very far, very, very far away from the rest of the United States. And there's tons of Americans living there and tons of Americans that vacation there. It'd be a lot like that. That analogy actually makes sense, I think. And then Canadians, like Canada, is also known for being cold a lot of the year or having very harsh winter. So there'd be a special place for Canadians to go make a pilgrimage to, <laughs> to migrate to, like a flock of geese or something. I'm not comparing Canadians to a flock of geese. Maybe I kind of am in this 
circumstance. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to get away from the cold, you fly off like a flock of geese to these islands, which are would be part of Canada. Because I know Canadians vacation to warmer places, like at certain parts of the year. Canadians go to like Florida, I think, and Cuba, right? I think those are popular. But then you'd have this, like part of Canada, you could go escape to. I'm, I'm starting to see the light here. <laughs> so why was Canada in the business of acquiring these beautiful scenic islands? Yeah. Well, back in 1917, Sir Robert Borden, the Prime Minister of Canada at the time, okay. he's actually the guy on the $100 bills, oh, look at sent that. a proposal to the UK government essentially asking if Canada could <laughs> integrate the islands. What? <laughs> what? This guy's <is> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How come none of our politicians today are doing this? This was 1917. It's been a hundred years and none of our politicians ever petition other countries to ask for tropical islands to be added. I'd love that. I'd vote this guy in. <laughs> That's so funny. So this is a hundred years ago. He, he asked the UK if Canada could just have the Turks and Caicos islands um so they canada wouldn't even have to pay for it they're they're just asking for a solid just asking for a favor why does the uk get to decide D does the uk technically own these islands i'm not sure how all this works gordon was obviously looking for a cheap vacation during the canadian winter <laughs> right. but also right. he was looking to expand canada and how many prime ministers have had the opportunity to right. add a new province? Well, not that's really that that is kind of like cool to think about. Um, it's a man. The more I think about it, it has so many parallels to Hawaii being becoming part of the United States. Like it's not that crazy. It literally happened to my country. I just don't think about it. Uh, if this had happened a uh, hundred years ago. Canadians wouldn't even be thinking about this as strange. It'd just be like normal. It'd be like, hey, you want to go vacation down to the Turks and Caicos Islands this winter? And it'd be like, oh yeah, pack your surfboard. Like, it'd just be normal. Um, and like the narrator is saying, it would expand Canada's territory, I guess, and have a bunch of tourism, probably. It, honestly, I thought this whole premise sounded kind of silly at first, it actually isn't that silly. This really could have happened and would have made sense. Not many. And Borden wanted to be remembered and essentially start, well, a mini Canadian empire of some sort. <laughs> what? Wait, what? The islands also offered... What? Wait a minute, what? Start a mini Canadian empire? This would have been the start of Canada expanding its empire to take over the world. Never mind. Thank goodness this didn't happen. Canada would have been ruling the, the earth by now if this happened. For some strategic components, being near a major shipping route oh. and close to the Panama Canal, oh. Canada would therefore be able to build a shipping port, acting as a fueling stop for major vessels traveling Whoa. on the trade route. This would Oh, so Canada having the Turks and Caicos would have been like strategically really advantageous for shipping routes for capitalism and money so there's a bunch of reasons not just because it'd be a cool place to get a tan but also for for shipping and exporting stuff uh what does the turks and caicos think of all this were they just like n could they give their opinion on this did they want to become part of canada did the uk just get to decide what happened would essentially make a lot of money for Canada okay. and even grow the Canadian influence in the Caribbean Sea area. Right, so right. That's, man, that's a great point. Yeah, because there'd literally be a part of Canada in a, this whole new area of the world. And all these other islands, Cuba, Bahamas, Dominican Republic, Jamaica, would all like, as a byproduct, get exposure to like the Canadian culture and trade and stuff. This could have been huge. Surprisingly, most locals in the Turks and Caicos or Turks and Caicos Islanders, as they are known, uh -huh. which really sounds weird to be completely honest, <laughs> okay. uh, actually supported 
the unification with Canada. What? What? They actually know this. They actually know this? That the, the people, the inhabitants of the Turks and Caicos Islands, they wanted to be unified and become part of Canada. They, why didn't this happen? Wow. That like, that's huge to me. Sounds like Canada wanted this to happen. The people on the uh, Turks and Caicos wanted this to happen. Why didn't this happen? You see, before 2002, locals were not granted British citizenship, making it very difficult for these people to travel and even huh. leave the islands. Whoa. Mobility was therefore severely limited and economically, the islands were very much suffering considerably. So are these islands technically, were they part of the United Kingdom? And that's why Canada, Canada had to ask the United Kingdom. And did the United Kingdom say no? Did they say no? Did they ruin this? Very few investments were made on the islands and many locals saw unification with Canada as an opportunity for development and prosperity for the islands. Wow, this could have really benefited like the, the original inhabitants of this island as well. It would have benefited everyone, man. This is, this is not what I expected like this story to turn out like, but this is like so fascinating. This is like even more fascinating than I could have anticipated because it's, it's compelling. It's a compelling story that this probably should have happened and would have benefited everyone. And it would have been like this cool, like tropical part of Canada. However, as we all know, the proposal was ultimately refused mm. and the islands remain part of the UK as oh, we know it today. Okay. Wow. Uh, poor Canada. It just wants a small sliver of paradise. <laughs> you were this close, man. You were this close, literally. It, it's like over 10 times bigger than Prince Edward Island. It would have added a lot of territory to Canada. It would have been like a totally different climate, tourism, trade, this close. I don't mean to rub it in or anything. I mean, this was a hundred years ago. I think everyone's over it by now. I didn't even know this was a thing <laughs> until this video. Is that really too much to ask for? Mm. Well, well, the UK I thought guess so. Yeah. I guess Anyways, so. The Turks and Caicos and Canada continued flirting essentially with each other for the rest oh. of the 20th century. Oh. Multiple proposals were drafted by MPs in 1974, oh. 1986, and 2004, but ultimately failed due to immigration, banking issues, and even healthcare issues came up. Whoa, what? This is not something that came up just a hundred years ago. This has been coming up, this has been proposed by probably Canada and the, the uh, Turks and Caicos Islands. This has been proposed as recently as 2004, like in, very much in the modern day. Wow, I did not know this was still something, this is still something that Canada really wanted to happen and is still fighting for. 2004, however, was a weird one since the province of Nova Scotia even offered the islands to be part of the province. What? Ima oh, <laughs> what? This is so interesting. This story just keeps getting better and better. Plot twists. Now Nova Scotia is saying that Turks and Caicos can just become part of Nova Scotia instead of its own province. Would that make it easier or something? Imagine greater Nova Scotia including tropical islands some 2,460 kilometers away from yeah. its nearest shore. Wow. Makes lots of sense, right? <laughs> Maybe. This would, however, make entry much easier for the islands since joining an existing province uh, overcomes all the constitutional issues of joining. That's why they were doing that. It, it wasn't just Nova Scotia trying to start its world dominance plan. <laughs> Nova Scotia was trying to make it easier for the Turks and Caicos to join Canada, just become part of Nova Scotia. That's easier, apparently, when it comes to acquiring new parts of your country. I didn't know that. Becoming a full-on province, on the other hand, 
is slightly more complicated. Okay. Creating a new province actually requires the support of seven provinces out of the ten. Wow. Which is kind of unlikely to happen. Oh, really? I wonder what Canadians think about this. Since he's talking about that, this would have required seven out of ten provinces to vote yes to have the Turks and Caicos join Canada. Would most Canadians be in favor of this? Is this just too strange, like, for some Canadians to add, like, a another nation to Canada at this point, like, in the modern day? Would that just be kind of strange? Or would do a lot of Canadians, are you open-minded to this? Like, yeah, that sounds cool, and I could get my beachfront property there <laughs> started. And creating a territory is another way that the islands could enter Canada, okay. uh, requiring only an act by the federal government. Okay. This option is a lot more feasible and a lot more realistic. Interesting. However, the story does not end there for the lovebirds. In really? 2014, the Prime Minister of the Islands, Rufus Ewing, visited Canada to explore once again the possibility of a union between the two nations. Really? This was in 2014, or really, like, not long ago, 10 years ago. Um, the Prime Minister of the Turks and Caicos visited Canada and was talking about this uh, agreement that recently. He clearly made it obvious that the islands are very much still interested in a continued relationship with Canada and desire to improve relations. Really? The hashtag the 11th province was even trending on Twitter during this time. <laughs> no way. Showing the general support for the idea even in the Canadian public. Do Canadians know about this? Like are most Canadians aware of this possibility? I have never heard about this until watching this video. I had, I had no idea this was a possibility. I had never heard of this island, to be honest, Turks and Caicos. I didn't know this was a thing. Do you most, have most Canadians, like, heard of this? Like, hashtag 11th province trying to join Canada? Canadians are, after all, the second largest tourist group and also the second largest minority on the islands after Americans. Oh, okay. Can oh, oh, really? I mean, apparently Americans visit these tropical islands the most out of any tourism group uh, next to Canadians. I, t I didn't know that. I'm one of the, the Americans who has not vacationed there, obviously. Canada also has a robust healthcare system that intrigues most islanders. Hmm. Not to mention the many economic benefits that Canada would be able to put on the table for the islands. Sure, sure, it sure. It would essentially create an economic boom for the Turks and Caicos. Right, I don't know what the economy is like for the Turks and Caicos. I don't know if they're struggling or if they're doing really well and flourishing, but it seems obvious they want to become part of Canada and that there'd be a lot of financial benefit to become part of Canada and have all the benefits of the Canadian government and economy. And Canada would probably take much better care of the islands than the UK. Mm. It would be treated like its own child, and actually like an only child, spoiling right. the islands with everything they have ever wanted. <laughs> what kind of analogy is that? <laughs> so the Turks and Caicos is part of the UK? Really? Um, but it's one of many children. If it were, if the Turks and Caicos joined Canada, it would be one of its beloved only tropical island child to continue this analogy and be taken care of very well, very, very well. Tucked in and However, night. many Canadians think that it would not be worth it and maybe it would oh. even shatter the image of Canada on the international scene, given Ooh. that Canada would essentially have a colony which Canada obviously is against. Interesting. I understand what he's saying here. It would definitely change Canada and its image globally. But how much has Hawaii becoming part of the United States changed the image of the United States? Not at all, really. And people love Hawaii. 
It really wouldn't look good for a country that is literally praised for its liberal values. And also, Hawaii has successfully maintained its like traditional culture, and a lot of the original inhabitants of Hawaii still live there and uphold their traditional values and culture. So Hawaii is part of America, but it still very much like has its own culture, and Americans respect that. So it could be that kind of situation if Canada uh, and the Turks and Caicos were to unify. All that we know now, however, is that there is no plans that were made and the union between the two nations might just be a dream. Yeah. Anyways, that wow. is it for today's... Wow, 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 wow. Fascinating. Might just be a dream. This was great. This was by Atlas Canada, and I gotta give this video a like. That was great. Fascinating story. Interesting, too. Man, I had no idea about this. Um, and it sounds like this was so close to happening so many times. I don't know how close it actually was. It's more like that Canada had a lot of times where it was seriously talking about doing this and negotiating, and all those fell through. And it just might never happen, but it's interesting to think about nonetheless. Very interesting. I enjoyed this very much. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, Feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on Canada joining up with the Turks and Caicos Islands, uh, those islands becoming part of Canada. Uh, Canada having its own tropical paradise thousands of miles away. Very interesting. Feel free to give me your thoughts on that. That'd be super interesting. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me, reacting to Canada and Canadian culture and learning things about Canada for the first time, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.